something drives us to do this. It was the lack of, I suppose, satisfaction of listening and just absorbing what was played on a record and wanting to get on board and find out, you know, and then interpret what I heard. That's, that's really what it is. He is consistently ranked as one of the best and most influential guitarists of all time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be taking a look at the life and career of Jeff Beck. Born June 24, 1944, Jeffrey Arnold Beck began singing and playing makeshift guitars at a young age. Beck showcased a unique ability to imitate a variety of guitar styles. When he began his career in the 1960s, he used this skill to his advantage. It's hard to put the finger exactly where my present style comes from. It's just a, the years of listening to people that I really was drawn to, you know, from rockabilly to the 60s, you know, Hendrix and um, even Ravi, Ravi Shankar, who twisted everything around for me with the bends. And I applied a lot, a lot of his, not direct lifts, but the actual technique of bending the G string and, and you know, forming melody by bending the string rather than just playing the single note. So a lot goes to, to Ravi Shankar for that. It's also um, Eastern influence, you know, Arabic music. I don't care about politics or anything like that, as long as the song sounds good, I'll play it and, and, and try to, you know, embroider what's there and embellish it and, and try to make it my own. In 1965, his friend and fellow session guitarist Jimmy Page recommended Beck as a replacement for Eric Clapton in the band The Yardbirds. His time with the band was a successful one, and they had many top 40 hits, including their cover of the track, I'm a Man. By 1967, Beck had formed the Jeff Beck Group, with members like vocalist Rod Stewart and bassist Ronnie Wood. By the time the band dissolved two years later, they had produced two critically and commercially successful albums, Truth and Beck Ola. Another incarnation of the group materialized in the early 1970s, though this band fell apart after two albums. But you build up a, a camaraderie, and I think anybody will tell you that the band is better than pick up players any day of the week. You become a soap opera, you become a family really, and you share travel griefs and misery and all the rest of it, internet <laughs> and all the rest of it. Beck joined up with bassist Tim Bogert and drummer Carmine Apice to form Beck Bogart and a piece in 1972. Though they were technically brilliant, their one hit was a cover of Stevie Wonder's track Superstition, and they parted ways in 1974. Jeff Beck's first solo album, Blow by Blow, was released in March 1975. This record exhibited the guitarist's mastery of the jazz rock genre and was his most commercially successful album. Beatles producer George Martin served as Beck's producer and arranger on the record. After touring in support of the album, he returned to studio to record Wired in 1976. He was joined by keyboardist Jan Hammer, who was a key influence on the album's sound. He was also instrumental on Beck's next album, 1980's There and Back. It's funny how you look back, it's like an old photo album where you think, oh, sorry about the hair, you know. <laughs> the Jan stuff still stands up, head and shoulders, I think. Just his ears, you know, are so incredible, and his technique. I, l I lost George Martin along the way in the quest to try to find a more aggressive, spin on the type of music that I was influenced with by, which was Mahavishnu Orchestra, John McLaughlin, and all those great players. What I wanted to do was join up with Jan and try to make a more, slightly more accessible version of that, really. Uh, I say accessible, I mean that I was incapable of doing what John did, you know. <laughs> so it was a watered-down version, but I, I did have fun doing that. By the time the early 80s rolled around, Beck began performing in a number of benefit concerts and even played with other former Yardbird Eric Clapton and longtime friend Jimmy Page. <laughs>
Throughout the 1990s and into the new millennium, Beck continued to collaborate with other artists. Nothing happened and then I was on, all of a sudden on 15 other people's albums just by a, a couple of Jack Daniels, you know, and a promise. But Morris I've always found fascinating and he's a close friend of Chrissy Hind, who I'm also for, very close to. And uh, when you're close like that, things happen. And the next morning I was down there on the, on the way to the studio. <laughs> no other reason that I liked the guy, no. I didn't have a clue about the song. The Yardbirds were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992, while Beck was inducted himself in 2009. April 2010 saw the release of his 10th studio album, Emotion and Commotion. The album mixes original tracks with covers and features a number of collaborations. His skill is unmatched, and because of this, Beck has been rewarded throughout his career with a number of awards and honors. In the world of guitar heroes, Beck is known as a perfectionist, almost to a fault. It's a form of musical Tourette, I think. <laughs> it's involuntary spasm. Um, I think it's probably a form of insanity, to be quite honest. I think most people are, who play are quite nuts anyway. You know, you become obsessed about sounds and positioning, and notation and chords, and we just get drawn into it. But I try not to be boring, and that's all it is, really. And I make terrible mistakes. If it's a great mistake, I, I put it in there and, and, then, <laughs> and, it, and then expand it. Because of his talent and his refusal to stagnate, Jeff Beck will no doubt go down in history as one of the greatest guitarists in the history of rock and roll.